Hi, so uh, today we're going to take a look at what IFEs are in JavaScript. So IIFE, which basically stands for Immediately Invoked Function Expression. Now, what that does mean is let's say I have this uh, function uh, say hello. And inside this function, I call console.log hello. And then this function will work if I call say hello like this. Right? I see say hello like this. Now we could also execute this function immediately after it was created like this. We encapsulate the function into an object and then immediately call that function like this. And we can remove say hello from here. And if you look at that, we get the same say hello thing here. Uh, that also means that uh, say hello does not exist as a variable anymore, which means we can just remove the name of the function here that is turn this into an anonymous function and this anonymous function can be immediately called after it has been created basically we are immediately invoking the function after it is being declared and this entire thing is an expression so immediately invoked function expression and the question is what is the benefit of an iffy one of the benefits of an iffy is it can help us create local scopes without polluting the global scope so for example, if I do something like this, var a equal to 10, var b equal to a by 5, and log the value of uh, a plus b, okay, this runs like this, but uh, here, We're gonna see that a is not defined, which means outside this uh, iffy, the variable a and variable b are not created. So in my global scope, which for browser it would be the window, for node it would be the global. So in my uh, global scope, I am not polluting the variables a and b. That's um, a very good use case of an iffy. Also, uh, although in ECMAScript 6, uh, let and const have got block scopes, but uh, if you're using ECMAScript 5, then you can use ifs for creating blocks, uh, for creating block scopes. For example, if you have if uh, true and you have this block, so if you do var a equal to 10 and uh, log the value of 10 here, oh, sorry, log the value of a here. Basically, see that this scope uh, filters into this uh, if true block scope. And if we write var a here, and if we take the console log line outside, that still continues to work because var has got function scope and not block scope. Uh, but now, if I do it like this, um, if I do it like this, function. var a equal to 10 and if I run this so now a is not defined basically inside this if block I have been able to create a new scope for running some of my uh, work without polluting the global scope apart from that another thing that if can do is help in minification now for example take uh, this uh, function and this function does a few things like this a 3 power 4 equal to math dot power 3 comma 4 and if 
4 power 3 is uh, dot power 4 comma 3 root 2 is mat dot square root 2 and um, let's say we have this 9 10 is equal to mat dot 9 10 and I'll call this function like this uh, do math and we'll get a value out of these printed 3 to the power 4 is 81 4 to the power 3 is uh, 64 root 2's value and sine 10's value we've got it and we can do a bit of minification here if we use ifies like this let's say we turn this do math function into an iffy and let's say we take variables l t r and s and here we give console dot log math dot pow math dot square root and math dot sign as arguments here now we can reduce this entire work done here into something like this okay we run this same result but now uh, inside this particular iffy uh, we can continue to use l as a function for doing console.log instead of writing console.log every time and this is the kind of minification that uh, scripts like uglify.js performs on uh, your javascript so that your javascript becomes uh, very small in size now apart from that uh, Let's talk about another very nice uh, place where we can use an iffy, and that is the classic for loop set timeout problem. Which is if I have for var i equal to 0, i less than 10, i plus plus, and call set timeout. There's a function inside this function, I do console.log i, and we run this set timeout every 100 milliseconds right and when we run this program a lot of you might be expecting that this would print the values 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 but when we run this we're going to see that 10 gets printed 10 times and this happens because of closure is that this variable i gets closed into this function and it is the same variable i so basically when this for loop runs the variable i increases from 0 to 10 and this function is called 10 times after this for loop has run because running this for loop 10 times takes less than 100 milliseconds and this set timeout function is going to run 10 times every 100 milliseconds so at 100 200 300 so on up to 1000 milliseconds it's going to run but the for loop itself would have finished running within the first 100 milliseconds. Now we can solve this problem using an iffy like this. Let's create a function and inside this function, um, let's call this function immediately with the argument i and inside that function, let's call that argument as j and move this set timeout call into this function and do a console.log on j so we took an external function to create a new closure inside which we will call set timeout function and inside this new closure we are rebinding the value of i to j now if this run this function like this now we can see that we actually get the values printed 0 to 9 
Now this particular problem uh, going outside the scope of discussion of ifies, this particular problem could have been solved much in a much simpler manner if we had done it like this. Say we have this set timeout function and instead of var if we use let Um, sorry, use i here and run it like this. Then also we get 0 to 9 because let creates an internal closure which gets bound to every iteration of the function and a new i gets inside the closure inside every iteration when we're using let. So there is something that you can use if you're using ECMAScript 6. But what if you are not using ECMAScript 6 and you still want to use var? So in that case, we can also do something which is take use of the signature of set timeout, which basically has a callback function, a delay, and an array of arguments which are passed to the callback function. So let us actually use this function as our argument, the first argument, give the delay as 100, and in place of argument, send the value of i. That also works because when you call set timeout with a function, a timeout, and an argument, a copy of this argument is made because it's passed by value and it is bound to this particular function.